Glory to God. Now, man of God, man of God, oh man of God. Oh man of God. Now we, we are dealing with the prophetic secrets. I'm going to be on here for just a couple moments dealing with the prophetic secrets of Joseph in Genesis and Joseph, the husband of Mary. Because their life is, is really the, the, it's the demonstration of what it means to be a king. E even Joseph, the husband of Mary, which is real different. You never really hear nobody preach on Joseph like that. But he had a kingly quality in him. Now, if we look at the Joseph in Genesis, remember, the Joseph in Genesis went through all type of adversity and his spirit never changed in the, in the sense that he turned against God. You understand? His spirit, it changed in the sense that he went from glory to glory. You see what I'm saying? It didn't change in his, his, his commitment, uh, his decision to be committed. It changed in the level of commitment. As a man, you are a dominator. You really ain't got to wait for a woman to make you a dominator. You already have that in you. You got to have that before you meet a woman. You see what I'm saying? Because you don't know how long God going to take you down the path to prepare you for a woman. Because you can't. <laughs> if you think you can handle a woman just because you got a thing between your legs, that ain't going to work, baby. M women are mysterious creatures. You got to be prophetic to tap into a woman. Women don't. Women are. They, 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 they talk more to their girlfriend more than you. You got to be prophetic. Uh, so there are certain things that you're going to have to establish in yourself solo while you're by yourself. You're going to have to tap into that. Joseph, before he got with anybody, before he was with anybody, he was being processed by God and he said yes to the process. As a man of God, you got to say yes to the stages of sanctification that God going to take you through. He not going to let you, um, Follow all the other young men, the older men, and follow that dusty system. You're going to be under a peculiar path with peculiar instructions. And, and you're going to have to function like you're God's woman. Because your submission levels is going to be at an all-time high. The eagle strangles the eagle or the eagle strangles the eagle. One or the other... Is killing. Both of them can't kill. One of them got to kill. Either the ego is killing the ego. Or the ego is killing the ego. Now. The ego realm makes you anxious. But the ego realms makes you patient. Makes you patient. It's a difference. And the more patient you are as a man. The more dominion you have. All of your dominion as a man of God is connected to your patience. Remember, it was Apostle James. He's an apostle and he caught the revelation about patience. Us men, when we choose to be patient, that's when we package the most power. Because patience is not nothingness. It's readiness that's being managed by contentment. I'm going to say that again. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to say that again. <laughs> when you flowing like this, I ain't going to stop my flow. Hey, my God, this is the lion in me, boy. This is the lion king. You must not know about me. You must not know about me. Now, I, I'm just saying that for me. That ain't, that ain't going to save nobody. That's not going to win nobody at Jesus. All right? That's not going to win nobody at Jesus. I said that for me. I'm stirring up my own self. I'm stirring up my own gift of God, my own wisdom, my own anointed, my own mantles, my angels. That ain't going to save nobody. So don't try to flex and T-Rex. 
Patience is not, waiting is not nothingness. It's not, patience is not nothingness. But it's readiness that's being managed by contentment. Contentment is the ability to celebrate God where you currently are. But contentment is not complacency. Complacency plants itself and rejects progress. But contentment carries the right atmosphere to advance. I want you to watch the replay because I'm talking hot right now. I'm talking hot. Contentment is the celebration of God before you get the fullness of your dream. Wow. Contentment is the celebration of God before you get the fullness of what you've been promised. Contentment magnetizes a harvest because you're proving to God your maturity to steward it when it comes. As a man of God, your dominion is not only in patience, it's in prayer. We are prayer warriors. I built JHM out of praying in the spirit. I did not want to go the route, but I discovered the strategy of my ministry in praying in the spirit. We are prayer warriors. We were created to pray. We are addicted to prayer. And our prayer moves mountains. It changes cities. Our prayers are confrontations with the principality over our land. Our prayers. We are prayer warriors. We are prayer dominators. When we pray, nations change. When we pray, sicknesses are moved. When we pray, children are delivered. When we pray, queens are unlocked. When we pray. We are such prayer warriors that even King Jesus is still making intercession. Because as a man of God, you are carrying intercession grace. You're carrying intercession grace. Even King Jesus is still walking in his prayer life. Yeah, oh my God. Even King Jesus is still walking in his prayer life and he done went to heaven. My God. Saints, there's an anointing falling in here. There's an anointing falling in here. The Lord Jesus is still walking in his prayer mantles. So saints, Guess what? Even God prays. The one that rules over everything prays. Well, you say, well, who do he pray to? He prays to himself. He pits divine goals. In front of him. He prophesies. To keep himself faithful. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Even God Almighty. Keeps on prophesying him to himself. So that his consistency will never be damaged. 
That's why it says, though you are faithless, he remains faithful. Why is he full of faith? Because he's prophesying the word to himself. Ha! Ha! Ho! 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 Even he prophesying his word to himself so that himself would stay in his word. And he has exalted his word above everything because of divine goals. Every time he look at his word, he births strength. Every time he look at his word, he birthed consistency. Because those divine goals are unlocking his hope. His expectation is continually rekindled through his Divine words. He prophesying. So that himself will stay himself. Saints. As a man of God. Your dominion is in patience. As a man of God. Your dominion is in prayer. We are prayer warriors. We got prayer power. Elijah prayed so earnestly. Do you know what earnestly mean? Look at the first four letters of earnestly. Somebody write it who can spell. <laughs> I need three of y'all. Only three man. Only three of y'all man from the, from the east side up. I need three. Three of you. Okay, that's all. That's all I need. Are you there? Are you there? I don't need no more there. I see you there. Are oh, you there? That's you there. That's that's all I need there. I said tree. I said tree. This a whole this this done turned into a forest. <laughs> I said tree. It, this a forest. This this done turned into a forest. It done turned into the woods. The neck of the woods. I said tree. I said tree. This about the whole forest done came out. The whole forest. This 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 done went from tree to trees. This stuff went to forest. This, I said tree. I said tree of y'all. I said tree. This tree. <laughs> I said tree. I ain't said whole Wu Tang Clang ain't nothing to mess with. Came out. I said tree of y'all. You done came a whole forest that came out. I know trying to make the planet green and everything. Some, 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 some keep it green and recycle and all that. But this the whole forest out to me. It's a green. That's I just told three of y'all. I just told three of y'all. Y'all got to count one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. You did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you put it as it was a tree. It wasn't a tree. I said one, two, three. That's three fingers. That's three fingers. With a four finger, five five fingers came out. All them fingers, them fingers can't fit. I just said one, two, three. I said three of them fingers. All them other fingers. <laughs> All them other fingers got to go, baby. Give me just three of them. One, two, three. I said three of them. I don't know where all them other fingers came from. It's just give me one, two, three of them fingers. Gotta get them other fingers out of the way. Them other fingers are chicken fingers. Them other fingers are chicken fingers. Chicken fingers. Other fingers are 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 chicken Look at the word earnest, earnest, earnestly. The first four letters, the first four letters of earnestly is earn. So watch this here. As a man of God, you have prayer power to earn certain levels of authority and changes from God. Listen to me, oh man of God, oh man of God, oh man of God. And the woman of God need to take this because if I'm talking about the man and, 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 and your man of God represent you, you should take that and say, ah, you see what I'm saying? As a man of God, you have a prayer authority that earns the next dimension of wisdom. It earns the next dimension of clarity. Signs and wonders, miracles, 
It earns the next level of direction, protection, discernment, awareness of danger. The Bible says the prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The reason why he's foreseeing evil because he's in prayer. Prayer power opens the eyes. Prayer power opens the eyes. Elisha prayed for his servant, Lord, open his eyes. And he started seeing angels. Prayer power is where angelic ministry becomes vivid, visual. The more you pray, the more that your senses are being exercised to see angels. Your spiritual senses need your prayers to, 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 to work its activation. Your spiritual senses needs prayer for you to work its activation. It's activated. You're earning your sight system through prayer. When, 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 you're, when you're praying and you're talking words of desperation towards God and words of authority and words of kingship and words of demonstration, while you talking, you walking into the Holy of Holies. Uh, as men of God, we pray ourselves into sanctification. The more we pray, the more we get away from things that cause us to stray. Our prayers are positioning us into purity. Prayer is your preparation for all levels of power. Your dominion is in prayer as a man. And when, 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 when you pray, heaven shake. The earth responds. Before King Jesus picked his disciples, he started praying. He started praying. Oh, la ma I don't, I don't bust the heaven wide open over me. Ah, I'm under open heaven. Been a, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let me go to the other one. Um, let me talk about Joseph real quick. Joseph in Genesis. I'm, I'm gonna give you some scripture here. Joseph in Genesis, Genesis 37, 38, 39, but I think it's 39. Joseph goes into Potiphar's house and he adapts to Potiphar's rules. As men, we have a, a prophetic anointing, a seer's anointing to discern who's the authoritative figure, the authority figure in every location. As kings, we know who is the king of Walmart the king of the police station, the king of the roads, the king of the neighborhood. What I'm saying is that there's, a, um, there's an ability to identify who's in charge and who you should respect and who you should serve and who you should please. As a man of God, when you unlock your humility, God reveals your divinity. When you unlock your humility, God reveals your divinity. When you humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God, you become the hand of God to your generation. Listen to me, man of God. Oh, man of God. Oh, man of God. Oh, man of God. Oh, man of God. When you humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God, you become the hand of God to your generation. Now God uses you to show his workings, the working of miracles, the working of the blessing, the working of wisdom. You, you, now, now you start operating in the working of strength, the working of fire. The working of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, your respect towards God as a man 
It makes you do things that other men are not willing to do. It makes you seek out God's instruction, his pleasure, his preference. And everything that you receive, you're looking for a way of how you can give it back to God in some way, shape or form. Even your time on earth. When you are a man after God's own heart, you'll give God your time some way, somehow. Even if you got to stay up late. You'll find a way to give him your time. Whatever you got to do. And, and let me just say this, man of God. You ain't always got to be doing something. Uh, like you ain't always got to be on your knees, baby. <laughs> Even if you're not on your knees, you could be walking in the store and spending time with God in your mind. Because your mind stirred. Your mind is stirred. Your mind is hot fire. And, and even and let me tell you something, man of God, one of the best times, and this go for women too, but one of the best times sometimes when, when God able to get your attention is when you drive it. Sometimes you got to drive to get in the spirit. Your spirit go places sometimes when you're driving because that's what's really going on in your life. You are a driver. That's why God trained us men so that we can drive. We drive other people into their destiny. And so we are drivers. So when you get behind that steering wheel, something happened to your spirit. It's like a baby leap. And you can just be driving. You ain't even got to be the one driving. Somebody else could be driving you. And your, your mind becomes stirred about life. You start thinking stuff. Because you're in a proximity of how life really goes. Everybody is being driven. So when you driving or you being driven, you're in the location where the spirit of God is actually, de he, he desires to do this for you. He, he wants to guide you in all truth. He wants to drive you into a new mantle, a new mindset, a new hope, a new desire, a new energy, a new strength. He constantly want to drive you. So, so when you find yourself driving, it's like you're linking up with the activity of the spirit. And that's why all type of activities start operating in you. Glory to God. Come on, man. Come on, man. There's, there's a prophet is higher. A prophet, a prophet, a prophet. One of the most powerful encounters you're going to have on earth. A prophet. The most powerful encounter you're going to have on earth is a prophet. And I can say that with understanding now because I know that even though apostle is firstly, apostle is really a prophet. You see what I'm saying? A prophet is really a, a, a apostle, really a prophet that has that has graduated. My God. No, no, I want, I want to say this. I want to say this. An apostle is the most powerful person you're going to meet in this life. An apostle is the most powerful man you ever going to encounter. Because apostles, we got a Bluetooth system to what you've been struggling with, what you need to hear, what you need to know what you need to flow in and, and we give you strategies and we talk directly into your soul and we deal with stuff that you haven't been able to explain to your dad, dad, your papa, your mama, your, 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 your dolls, your, 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 your action figures, your TV, your phone, your, 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 your all of that, your dog. Um, let me say this, as a man of God, you have apostolic potential in you. As a man of God, you got apostolic potential in you. Um, and watch this, the more sensitive and submissive you become to the father, the closer you get to accessing your apostolic abilities as a man. See, see, listen, uh, listen, man of God, the prophetic woman is not the highest woman. The apostolic woman is the highest woman. You know why? 
Because the prophetic woman, got to she got to be dragged through the mud too. She got to graduate to apostolic flows. She, she got to tap into her benefits mentally, emotionally. She got to find what mantle has God given me in my emotions. So for me to use today and dominate. Well, what words God want me to speak into my atmosphere to shift my mood, to shift my hype, my hope. Saints, did you ever think that hope is hype? God give you hope so that you'll become hyped. Hope and hype go together. Cause, cause, cause when you're excited, God is invited. And, and when you excited, the anointing is ignited. <laughs> Every man of God has an apostolic qualities inside of him that he has to locate by saying yes to divine authority. In order for you to step into your apostolic position as a man, you have to love the kingdom of another king. Here we go. Joseph loved the kingdom of Potiphar. And he learned the rules of Potiphar's kingdom. Wow. Everything that pleased Potiphar, he did it. To the point that he didn't even sleep with his wife because that was that was against the kingdom's etiquette. See, see, apostolic grace, it makes you respect the kingdom of another man. That's why when David, David, when he went go kill Uriah and took Bathsheba, God got angry. And said, what you doing killing that man? God didn't have nothing to do with Bathsheba. <laughs> God said, you shouldn't have had cut that man off. Why you caught his body for? What you caught his body for? He ain't done did you nothing. You mess with another man's kingdom. Saints, apostolic grace. It, it, it flows in all intensity when you respect another man's wife. See, 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 some of you are on here. You Listen, you know how much men in my ministry that got wives? Huh? You're not going to find Prophet Joshua Holmes disrespecting your authority and telling your wife, Thus saith the Lord, I tell you this here. Go do this here. You're not going to find Prophet Joshua Holmes. I dare you. Go look in their messenger and see. Go, go look in their messenger and see if Prophet Joshua Holmes telling them stuff. I don't do that. Because it's going to conflict your authority. If anything, I'll go to you and go tell her. Go tell, go tell the baby. <laughs> Go, go tell the baby, go, go, go tell the baby, where the Lord, and you, you get the credit, you get the credit, baby. You're going to get you some goods tonight. She's going to throw it back on you. <laughs> you get the credit, but, uh, but listen, you get the credit, but I'm going I'm to get, I'm going to get harvest when it's time. Just shoot. Listen, I'm not talking about that way. I'm talking about it. She's going to throw it back on you. Shoot. You can wait, wait. But listen. <laughs> why, why you okie doking? Huh? Why you okie doking and stroking? Shoot. Give honor where honor do. Holler at your boys. Just make sure you honor me. Apostolic grace, we don't mess with other people, man wives. We respect their kingdom. That's apostolic grace.
And so you're going to have to remember that as a man of God, God always going to assign you to a kingdom where you got to respect another king. That's going to unlock your kingship. You see what I'm saying? If you disrespect that king and violate that king, you cancel out your kingship. You cancel out your kingship. See, this apostolic how I'm talking to you here, this apostolic. This apostolic how I'm talking to you. Absalom didn't have a kingdom. And now he tried to start his own kingdom, but it didn't, it went, it didn't go too well. It probably about two people came to his services. He probably prophesied to the roach and the ant that was in the second row. He saw it in the realms of the spirit that there was two bugs. One was crawling to the left. One was crawling to the right. Both of them was. The roach was just like this here. And the roach was running from him too. Even the roach said, let me get out of here. There ain't no anointing in here. Holy Ghost saying in here. I came here to receive a baptism. I came here to receive the Holy Ghost. I came to receive a Holy Ghost in the Roach Kingdom. This man ain't got no Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm out of here. The Roach, he is up there chasing the Roach. The Roach up there running. Ro the, the daggone crazy man. <laughs> Since one time I knew somebody, I knew somebody, they would hold church services. There ain't nobody would come at all, like nobody at all. And he was a man. And he called himself an apostle. And nobody would come. And, I, I, and so some, a couple of times I, I wanted to mess with him. I wanted to be disrespectful as possible. I said, sir, how, 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 how the service went today? I said, oh, it, was, it was good. It was great today. Okay. But see, while I was catching his, his while, well, my whole goal and intent was how you trying to grow a kingdom and you never respected somebody else's kingdom? You're trying to make something happen. You got to make something happen for another king before God can make all things happen for you. I was trying to catch his, I was trying to catch his memo. You trying to build your kingdom. You, men of God. We don't build our kingdom by building our kingdom. We build our kingdom by building your kingdom first. Juan helped me build my kingdom. And I told Juan, okay, go get your wife. Y'all go, y'all go have fun. With the separation and all. Gave him the instruction. Because he was going to wait on me. Even though Juan was feeling strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. I told Juan. Go ahead. Go ahead. Enjoy yourself. And saints. I ain't got to say thus saith the Lord. I am the Lord. And I change not. My command is divine. The will of God is in my mouth. The will of God is in my mouth. The will of God is my mouth. But see, he has to build my kingdom to unlock his kingdom. And since Juan is very submissive, Juan don't go nowhere until he tell me. Can you imagine Juan doesn't go nowhere until he tells me? Juan live in another state. He don't go nowhere until he tell me. All of his sons call me king of prophet. They get excited when they, 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 they get to meet me. The other day, I tapped into their mind. I, I knew they wanted to meet me. I was real busy doing stuff. I said, I said, I'm gonna meet you. I'm gonna meet them. I'm gonna go meet them. And I went go meet them. And they were so happy. But God read their heart. 
they don't want, want, want to get in my way or nothing like that, but they wanted to see me, so I made time and see them. See what I'm saying? And that all come through honor. His little children have sown a seed to me. His little children have sown a seed to me. That's the wisest thing you could do is train your children how to discern a king, a divine king on earth. Your children are going to meet many men. You are, they're going to meet many women. They're going to meet different people of this earth that are nobodies. You got to train them what divine presence is. This is divine presence. Crazy thing about it, I saw when I went to go preach at one church, his, his children were small. The crazy thing about it, now I see them growing up. I saw them when they were small. God don't want to rape you into honor. You got to make decisions to be honorable as a, as, a, as a man of God. He don't want to rape you into honor. You see what I'm saying? There's millions of men that will never honor God. You, you, God don't want to rape you into honor. You see what I'm saying? He don't want to have to enforce honor on you. Honor is supposed to be a beautiful, selfless expression towards God about how you creatively want to pleasure him. As men of God, God don't want to call us to prayer. God want us to pray because we're hungry for him. Every man of God is thirsty for God. And you got to keep on tapping into your thirst. Because when you tap into your thirst, you break your curse. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Shadadaya. Blessed is the man that hungers and thirsts for righteousness, for he shall be filled. You're only as full as your thirst, your hunger. Now, let's go to Joseph real quick. Joseph the husband of Mary. Remember, he hears that Mary, he hears that Mary is pregnant and he wants to hide her away. So I want you to catch something about Joseph that you probably never heard before, that, that he is protective of his dignity. But God wants to kill his dignity with how God has scheduled something in his life that he really can't control. And it's going to affect with his image. As a man of God, Apostle Paul had an infirmity that affected his dignity. And he prayed to God, Lord, please take this from me. Because he didn't like the fact that how he felt, but he also didn't like the fact how people looked at him with that infirmity. As a man of God, always remember that your infirmity is even an academy. Your infirmity is a university. And God is showing you all the levels of meekness, humility, and submission. You develop cooperation with God through your infirmities. The man has an infirmity for 38 years, but when King Jesus says, will you be made whole? He's learning how to cooperate with Jesus. He 
He's learning how to yield himself to divine timing. Nobody will pit me inside of the waters, Jesus. Nobody will pit me inside of there. I'm trying to swim like Nemo. I'm trying to blup, 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 blup. I'm trying to get in there, but they won't let me get in the waters. None of them. The man jumped in front of me. Where was him when the fat witch jumped on me? He got all type of excuses. <laughs> King Gia said, listen, player, I got five more minutes on me. Will you be made whole? Just let me know before I go. I'm going to give you one more chance. He said, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that, I'll take that. But look what God used infirmity as a GPS to perfect his cooperation. Infirmities perfect your cooperation with God. Hallelujah. 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 This is a glory day. This is a glory day today. This is a glory day today. Says, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you something right now. I'm feeding your spirit in a mighty way. I'm feeding your spirit in a mighty way. I'm, 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 I'm giving you massive, massive mantles. Massive mantles. Um, next week, uh, this week coming up, um, I'm going to have an all white day service. It's going to be powerful. I'm going to be teaching you and, 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 and something creative, something creative. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It, it's, it's about to explode. It's about to explode. It's about to explode. Uh, let's look at this here. So Joseph, his dignity is crushed because something happens to his woman that's out of his control. And it looked like somebody done dukes her, which she got dukes, but it was God. That's kind of tough. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. So Joseph is a man of strength. As a matter of fact, I do want to think about it. <laughs> so I'm, joking. I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm just joking around. I'm just joking around. And 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 God ducks the in uh uh and just to live with the fact what if God what if the strength all that <laughs> The strength, the strength, the longevity. What what went on there? What 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 went on there? God done. All right, I'm not gonna think about it. And and the mental warfare, I, I'm just showing you the mental warfare that Joseph has to go through, of knowing that people are gonna look at her and say, Y'all not even together. How she got dukes. Now Mary was a sanctified girl. She was a sanctified girl. So everything looks different. She's a sanctified girl. All right? So you got to see the mental strength of Joseph. I want to talk about Joseph in a way that you never heard a day in your life. Joseph has to, he has to cast down so much vain imaginations. And then he has to go from trying to pit her away to standing by her side. So he has to humble himself to the divine instruction of God. And it's all through being uncomfortable. Man of God, your discomfort is unlocking your dominion. Your discomfort is unlocking your dominion. Joseph is now switching his mind from saying, I don't want nothing to do with her. I dare you to. We got this. I didn't hit it first, but she. 
I wish I, I wish I still wish I were here the first, right? No, please, I don't want to hear it. I don't want no. Nah, let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. It was, it was, it was supposed to be okay, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Lord. It should have been me first. Uh, okay, Lord, I repent. I repent. I'm still not happy. Lord, I'm sorry. I repent of my sin. I repent. I repent that you hit it first. I re no, it's not that you hit it first. I ain't mad at that. I repent that I got mad that you hit it first. There's a difference. You had all the right to do what you had to do. You had to, you had to believe yourself, get the plan of God out. You had to bust the gates of hell wide open and destroy it. <laughs> you had to bust and all that. And I understand. And I... I understand. You like blue stuff. You have made the Sky blue, everything is blue. But listen, I know you own you, some levels of blue you don't like. So I understand. I'm not going to do it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to talk about it again. But when I talk about it, something strong just get up in me. Something just lift up in my toes, my, my, my heels. I got Prince heels. I get invisible Prince heels when I, when I think about it. Now think about it, I want to fight, I want to fight, I want to fight somebody, I want to fight somebody, I want to fight her, I want to fight her, I want to slap her. And Joseph submits to God. And Joseph has to say yes. To what God is doing. He has to say yes. To what God is doing. He has to agree with it. And he has to lower himself for the will of God to be done. So Joseph is a man of great strength. Contrary to how you probably have seen him. Every man of God have to learn how to let the Lord do stuff his way and let go. Um, there are some times in your life where dominion is adversarial. There, there's going to be times in your life as a man where your dominion is adversarial to you. Your dominion is your enemy. And you got to pit it off. You got you to gotta get far from it because it, it's going to speak some things to you. Because dominion that's out of season becomes demonic thoughts. Dominion that's out of season. You ever heard that before? Dominion that's out of season becomes deadly suggestions. And, and, and excessive dominion conceives pride. Excessive dominion conceives distractions. Because if you get overly dominant as a man, you can actually be distracted to how God wants you to deal with everything. See, Jesus, he knew how to use his dominion when Lazarus died. He didn't say, well, I'm going to send my word and, and he's going to come back alive. You notice that, right? Do you notice that? That he didn't say that I'm going to send my word? How come he sent his word to that other man's house and rose him up? Why King Jesus didn't say I'm going to send my word and Lazarus going to come out the tomb? He did it. Why didn't he do all that stuff? Resisting excessive dominion. Resisting excessive dominion. 
Why do you think that Elisha came out and didn't even decree nothing? He just, he, 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 he just, he, he didn't even wave his hand. He didn't do nothing spectacular. And he offended Naaman. All he said was go, go dip into Jordan seven times. And then went back into his house. Bye. Can you imagine you go to a prophetic meeting and you stand in front of a man of God? Go dip into Jordan seven times. Bye-bye. This is what he did. Because excessive dominion becomes deadly suggestion. It separates you from God. It becomes distractions. You miss the way that God wants you to handle a thing. Watch this. Matthew chapter one, verse 20. Look what it says here. It says, but while he thought on these things, so Joseph is thinking, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary your wife. Now, I want to ask you a question. I don't think that they had no ceremony. But the angel says, go and take Mary, your wife. The spiritual validity matters. If God backs, look at this. Go take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, is of the Holy Ghost. Look at what the text says right here. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So watch this. Angels are talking to Joseph. As a man of God, your dominion is not only in patience and in prayer, it's also in your personal angels. You got to learn how to move with them as a man. I got millions of angels around me. And I'll do a teacher on that some other time probably. Angels empower the level of a man. Your accessibility to the supernatural will be governed by your knowledge about your angels. Ha! Look, look. Look, Joseph is a man that angels are talking to. Joseph is a man that can hear from angels. Joseph is a man that angels are visiting his life. I'm talking about Joseph, the husband of Mary. Not the Joseph in Genesis. So, so, oh my gosh, I feel the anointing going through me. So, as a man of God, you must allow the Holy Ghost to introduce you to your personal angels. It got to become something of your serious focus. Because once you get to know those angels, ain't no demon could take you out of the will of God again. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Elisha was looking at Syrian armies in the natural. His servant gets nervous. He said, but boy, I pray that your eyes open up right now to see what I'm working with. This is why I'm Elisha. I'm not Elisha just because, you know, I got a nice looking face. I got nice clothes. I got a little money on me. I'm Elisha because of them. They up here back in that double portion. I, they up here back in that double portion. The reason why I'm able to walk in double power, double grace, double wisdom, double fire, double authority, double victory, double justice, double dominion. Double dominion, double dominion, double dominion, double dominion, double dominion, double dominion, double dominion is because of these angels. Ha! These angels got me turned. These angels got me fearless. These angels got me talking like I'm a warrior. These angels got me acting like I'm untouchable. These angels got me walking like I'm the king. These angels got me walking with prophecy in my mouth. These angels got me decreeing a thing and it shall be established. 
These angels got me calling those things that be not as told they were. It's because of these angels. These angels got the double portion on me. It's because of these angels. These angels showing me how to walk in the spirit. They showing me how to talk in the spirit. It's these angels. <laughs> 